Can I ask Freebird? Yeah, I just want to. I want to touch on Altice because it got cracked yesterday. You know, the short thesis continues to play out very well. It's actually quite amazing, uh, frankly, to listen to the CEO indirectly admit at a conference that everything we've been saying for years, especially given all the pushback that we've gotten from investors and that management team specifically. Um, and, you know, what we've been saying is they've been underinvesting in the network and service for years in favor of a buyback strategy that's essentially resulted in meaningful declines in customer service, performance, and, and the brand. And now with broadband penetration rates pushing you know, 90% post-COVID, we're seeing greater competition from fiber and fixed wireless and the stronger cable operators. You know, they're starting to see customer losses accelerate as a result. And, you know, I think folks forget that this whole leveraged equity model actually works both ways. Um, But Altice is not Charter and it's not Comcast. It's a much weaker operator with uh, lower quality assets. And so, you know, now at the conference yesterday, you have Altice's CEO, you know, uh, guiding to accelerating customer losses in in this quarter, not seeing the recovery in the back to school that they were expecting. So customer losses of 15 to 20,000, that's just a pretty big sequential uh, acceleration to the downside. They're basically scrambling to figure out what their capital allocation should be. So they're, so they're reevaluating the almighty buyback, talking about ramping up CapEx and OpEx at the same time fundamentals are deteriorating, and they're at 5.7 you know, times trailing leverage. Uh, and we still have the most difficult EBITDA growth comparisons ahead of us for the next two quarters, where I think growth is actually going to be negative versus the street up, low single digits. Um, and, you know, frankly, I think it's a little too late for them. These are investments that they should have been making years ago. There's a lot of deferred maintenance capex here that they're playing catch up with. Um, and so, you know, in that scenario, free cash flow evaporates. And if you look back at history, you know, this is how cable companies die and go bankrupt. And when we did our uh, original short report, you know, we showed how all T supplied the same uh, playbook in Europe. Uh, which looked great for years, but ultimately ended up in a similar situation, which ended up with Patrick Drahi and taking the company private. So they're in a really tough spot. You know, everyone's been saying the stock is cheap. It's always been cheap. Um, it's because it looks cheap on a free cash flow yield basis because they're underinvesting in the business, right? So cheap obviously gets cheaper in this situation, especially if you're losing customers at that leverage profile and your EBITDA margins are likely to, to deteriorate. And you know, if we look at if we assume EBITDA is down 2% next year versus the street up, you know, call 3 4%, we put an eight times trough multiple, EBITDA multiple on that, you know, you get to a $19 stock. So, you know, charter's trading closer to 12. We don't think it gets up to there anywhere close. Um, but, you know, with the stock down at 22, the risk reward is obviously less favorable on the short side. Um, that being said, you know, every turn of the multiple is seven point five dollars of equity, and the rate of changes on our side, like I said, for the next two quarters, and if I'm really right in the thesis and this thing really starts to unravel, there's probably even more downside. Um, so it's not hard to get to a stock that's in the high single-digit, low teens. Um, I definitely think the prudent move here is to cover some. Um, you know, it's just gone straight down for the last three months. Um, but, you know, the company still has free cash flow nonetheless and will probably turn the buyback on in some capacity uh, down here. Um, but until we have a line of sight into, like, a turn of the fundamentals, you know, we're still two, three quarters away, um, and I think it's, it's still a short. So, kind of all teeth. Um, so, it's kind of great to see the thesis of ultimately play out. Just to, uh, you know, buttress that with a, with a comment and a reminder. I mean, there's a couple points. One, uh, more than a couple points. One, great fucking call. Two, melting ice cube. Melting ice cube in quad three, very, very bad. Okay, so, and four, you know, like, one of my uh, buddies, competitors, Mike Wilson, it's like he wants everyone to go into melting ice cubes, defensives, staples, telecoms. Like, Mike, you got to take the economic environment and put it in company P&Ls. If you don't have pricing power, if you're Campbell Super Clorox or Verizon or or Altice, you're wrong the long you're you're long the wrong exposure at the wrong time. You're playing the wrong hand in the wrong game. Right? So that's again, not being critical, trying to help you be better, Mike. You know, that's it's an important thing, right? I mean, uh, yeah, I'm old enough to now remember I already admitted uh, you know how, how many years I've followed Howard stocks from the buy side, but I used to follow they used to give I had the cable guys too. Yeah, they go away. Like 
the, first of all, there's fraud even with Adelphia. I mean, I, I was like, you know, yeah. they, they can only do so much. The modern cable guys are like the big, big buyback. Hey, we're going to do this. You give all the buy side, the, the, you know, this management team in particular, the wink and the nods and everything else. But the fact of the matter is melting ice cubes are hard to stop when they're melting. And, and you know, those guys, by the way, they, they, they did everything they could that was not so legal uh, to make sure that the street didn't know that back then but the hit the, the 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 sector the subsector of of comms is littered with zeros yeah especially in cable telecom i mean and that's the thing like with an lts if you're losing subscribers i don't care if it's cable i don't care if they're rolling out fiber to part of the network like you might get a you know a, a telco wire you know a telco wireline type multiple if you're losing subscribers and if this multiple which is like six to seven times right like that's what copper trades at and if that if the fundamentals start to look like that, like if LTS goes to six, seven times, your equity is basically wiped out, right? So, and like you're right, like the cable cowboys, the history of cable, like just highly levered bankruptcy cycles. So, we'll see how this one plays out, but it's it's not looking good. Hey there, Hedgeye Nation, or if you're not part of Hedgeye Nation, thanks for watching Hedgeye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there. Subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content.